We'll start with the no prayer mantra. Om Namo Aryantanam Om Namo Sitanam Om Namo Ayadiyanam Om Namo Ajayanam Namo Ruik Sarvasamunam Eso Panchanamukaro Sarva Pavapanasano Mangalanancha Sarvesi Padamam Havai Mangalam Padamam Havai Mangalam Thank you everybody for coming this week. No, no, you're not late. Come on in. Uh, before we get started with the topic for today, we want an update. We gave some advice about a morning routine. Yeah. Did Were you able to implement any of that advice and did it work or did it not work? It did work, so I, I was able to, uh, I mean, it was more relaxed, I would say. And, so uh, what advice did you implement? Uh, the main thing was getting up uh, a bit earlier, so I started 30 minutes earlier than my routine. Right. And that actually eased out a lot of things. Kids also were up by then mm -hmm. or, or rather they they were earlier, uh, they got up earlier, so that really helped. Uh, and then trying to be calm in the morning and not getting freaked out because the time is ticking. Right. That, that also, I think, helped. So, yeah, it. it uh, so, it was a success? Yeah, I would say 80% yes. Okay. Only I'll take it. I'll only, take 80%. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> only when, uh, and, and whenever I was not able to get up, that is when it still continued. So <laughs> it is very clearly a success, yeah. Right, okay, great. And so hopefully you'll, because of that success, you'll be able to make it a habit? Yeah. Okay, great. I'm yeah. glad that that class was able to help. I just wanted to thank Bhavan. We started walking in the house. Oh, so good, in the evening. I say every day, yeah. but the time yeah, that we have done, it has, it has worked awesome. Just yeah. less than five minutes and yes, it does yes, wonders. Yes. You good. just pick up your own stuff. That's right. That's right. That's good. that's good. That's great. And so that's one of the ways that Jane values can add value to your life. And that's what we want. You know, as I've been talking your ear off about, I want you to take the things that we talk about here out of here. Because the easiest thing to do, and our kids do it in Patsala too, is to leave it in here and say that's something for, you know, Sundays or whatever. So... Today, I'm going to be doing less talking at you and more listening because I only prepared questions for you. I don't have any answers, okay? <laughs> so you have to give me the answers. Uh, so my first question is, how do we prove to our children that Jainism can add value to their lives? There are several ways I would say whatever we learn here, like be it mindfulness or be it being calm, following ahimsa, uh, all these in a way makes them a better individual, I would say. And but how do we prove that to them? How do we take it from something that they memorize or that they learn into something that they believe? Uh, for example, uh, being kind. Uh, it is a very center, uh, a centric value, I would say, in Jainism. So, and not hurting others. So, so, especially when I have seen my kids' friends, if they see a, see some ant going up, ant on the ground, the first thing is to kill that, right? And I've also seen my son stopping them from doing that. So, so I would say. Uh, it's more like uh, what are your beliefs and Jainism brings that in you, right? So that comes very instinctively that he will say, stop it, don't do that. I mean, so that I would say is, is a major plus point and uh, Jainism in true way is not hurting others, right? So, mm -hmm. so they, are, they are also practicing that and they are not, that goes on with eating non-vegetarian food or even eating uh, not eating chocolates which has egg in it so 
not eating cakes at in the school, taking their own cookies or we give cookies or anything that can be given by the teacher, which we know are, is not having egg in it. So I would say, yeah, not hurting others. That that main principle is getting. And so what are the consequences of doing that, that your kids see that they don't see in, for example, a meat eater's life, one of their friend's life? Consequence would be uh, they are more uh, calm, I would say, and they are not very hyperactive. I've seen kids going bonkers for whatever reason, whether they are eating food or drinking colas or the sugar intake, I don't know, whatever mm -hmm. it is, but they can go real. I mean, they have to burst out the energy much more than what our kids, I would say. It's not that they, I mean, my kids don't need to burst out the energy, but still, right. uh, comparatively, it is less, I would say. And do your kids see that and attribute that difference to Jainism? In, in some way, yes. I mean, they are still very young to be able to distinguish, mention what is the difference, but I think they are getting there. Anybody else? How do we prove to our children that Jainism can add value to their lives? So one thing comes in my mind would be, you know, we have had a lot of different experience by now. Uh, how you, how we grew up, mm -hmm. where we grew up, what was our company, <coughs> what is our company now, uh, what do we do at work, what do we do at home, and this type of experience. And when you put all of these things together and look back and see yourself, you know, you could be on a different path. You could be on a different uh, path completely in future. Then you bring over the core values of Jainism and just like how we had a last session, right? Forget about the deep thinking about Jainism, but what is my immediate reward right now? Right. If you follow just the basic core principles, just the basic, you know, no eager, no, no ego, no anger, you know, just basic things and see how you can focus on your studies, how you can uh, cope up with your friends, cope up with somebody uh, who is completely different from you, still keeping your core values with you. Um, I think kids sees that one and see those things coming to them as, a, as either getting better in the education, if you're, you know, just, just don't be angry, don't be frustrated all the time, just keep your time, keep your calm. Uh, those are some immediate benefits that they would take it. I would say they would get it uh, mm -hmm. if they just start following that. They probably would not get every detail, even I don't get every detail in the, this book. Right? Mm -hmm. But uh, getting those things and staying on that path um, probably would be more beneficial for them to, to get that and engage it at this stage. It's a small piece. Chunk. I cannot say that fully it will be integrated in their life. But uh, small bits and pieces, they would see the rewards that, okay, yeah, I was quiet, the whole class was angry, and they got some punishment or something that I was kind of locked out or on sidelines, you know, some sort of those type of uh, benefits. So at the beginning of your answer, that proof comes from trust. When you say, well, I tell my kids about these are the decisions that I made in my life, and look at me now, this is something you should try to be, you're... You're asking your child to trust you. About trust those you. About yeah, that's true. That is true. I mean, you have seen both ways. You know, the results of not doing what we kind of supposed to do or we should be doing as a Jaina. As a Jaina. And uh, when you, you see those results and you can gauge, not every time it works, but when it works, you, you can show and prove that, yeah, you know, staying calm and taking a decision with your calm mind makes it, uh, it, it makes a big difference in your life. Mm. How can we teach the values of Jainism in a way that our children can understand? Relate those things with day-to-day -day things <coughs> that they are doing and telling them they are not compromising. It's the, Jainism is nothing different that we are doing. It's lovely. Maybe that. Manish. Sorry, I'm late. Oh, no problem. We're talking about, I'd like an answer to the question. I'd like an answer to many questions, but we're, the question I'd like an answer to right now is, how can we teach the values of Jainism in a way that our children can understand? Yeah. Because they, they get easily uh, uh, excited or uh, 
that we have to follow tithis. We have, on certain days we don't eat onions and potatoes also. In a way, in Jainism, we, we are not supposed to eat at all. But right. only at least on tithis and our major festival like pollution, we don't eat them. But they are not compromising. There are variety of things that they can eat. With we have with millions of things that we can eat during that time. So uh, with things like that, they can realize that the Jain, the value of Jainism is is, is same as. Uh, Keep going. No, oh, that's okay. So I have a lot of questions for you today. I have no answers for you. I only have 10 questions. We're on question number two. How can we teach the values of Jainism in a way that our children can understand? And doing it with them, Miss. Again, if we just ask them to explore on their own, Miss, we have to showcase that we are also doing. So, you know, at least Sundays, Miss, I know weekdays also we can try, but Sundays to Sunday we are, so now they know we, we are doing this, Miss, uh, with, and my parents are also doing, so it's a way of doing, and it's a good thing to do. So your argument is an appeal to tradition, because kids somehow understand tradition. Yes. Okay. Because it, they go to school, see, when we, we came from India, Miss, people thought, okay, they, will they be able to have that English accent, but we do, didn't have to teach them because they go to school, they catch that and they see right now, kids are buying a hot lunch right now right. and they are not able to buy that hot lunch because right. the meal that they get, get it's not the one that uh, means we eat. So we don't have to teach those things, but we have to show that, okay, the Jainism that we are following here. It's the same thing that you, you can eat, miss. Only difference is you can also eat your hot lunch or your meal. But it's a different way we do. There is no compromise you are doing. They, sometimes the question comes, oh, why can't I buy? Miss, mm -hmm. I want to buy that one. Also. Right. So it's okay, miss, because they it's naturally that's what they are seeing. They, they are exposed to. Right. Just uh, maybe setting an example. Mm -hmm. you know, just being the example. And then having them kind of mimic that behavior. Right. You know, she's only three, so how is she going to learn the values unless she sees us doing it? Right. Uh, so, a val so one yeah, way that right. kids <laughs> understand things is by imitating. Exactly. And that's the best we can do is be somebody to imitate. Right. Uh, uh, we went to dinner recently, and you know, our friends eat meat, and we don't. And so my older one looked at them eating chicken and was like, um, why are you why are you killing a chicken in front of the the parents? You know, and so you you do have to be sensitive to other peoples and other cultures around you as well. So it's a fine balance. Um, but I teaching your own core values. Um, I think it's it's uh, very important. Mm -hmm. and because if we say see when meat when we say oh we say you like instant reaction, but we teach them teach our kids that oh it's you we don't eat then it's a wrong way of explaining them right. so let they are eating let them eat but what we are doing it's so they that's where they will understand otherwise if if in front of me the, the way he said means when we are uh, with everyone who are eating meat then it doesn't go well then so you're saying kids understand that different people have different behaviors and we want to teach them our own Slowly, yes. But I think we have to make them understand. Slowly, yes. They, they, they are confused. Yeah. And, and so you have to make them understand that, look, different cultures have different different ways of doing, doing things. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is I have non-Jain vegetarian friends. Mm -hmm. And they're, ones I spent time with this weekend, um, their way of, of doing this was, we don't eat meat, like the, the husband and wife, my friends, but they're like, we're letting our kids try it. Mm -hmm. That's their philosophy. Like, we don't want to dictate what they should or shouldn't do. They need to explore on their own. So, you know, everybody has different philosophies. So sometimes driving with them, it's uh, challenging. Can you repeat that question? Because everything we've talked about is food, and I didn't hear the word food in your version of the question. <laughs> How can we teach the values of Jainism in a way that our children can understand? Okay, I'm just making sure. 
<laughs> a lot of it's food based. <laughs> Here's the next question. How can we teach our children the importance of having friends with similar values? How can we teach our children the importance of having friends with similar values? And you can disagree with the premise of the question. The saying is that you're the average of your five friends, right? Uh, you, you may disagree. You may think it's important to have friends with dissimilar values. And if so, I want to hear that. I think it's hard to have a set of parameters and I have a, you know, tick mark saying, okay, do you have this? Do you have this? <laughs> then you're my friend. I don't know if that it works that way. I mean, you just, you're there in school, you meet people, you jive, you don't jive. Right. And, and I think that's just, it's just an evolution. Mm -hmm. But isn't it important for you to choose who you associate with? It does, it is. And How do we teach our kids that? But that's where they will seek out people who they feel comfortable with. Mm -hmm. And hopefully those are dictated by the values you teach them. No? It may be that way. Um, I think it is that way. I think that you're right. They are friends with people who they're comfortable with and that they are more comfortable with people who share their values. But that doesn't mean that we should offload the decision to chance. Does it? Well, I don't think I would. I, I mean, there's a fine line of saying that all the values I have, the other person has to have. Right. right. That's that's one thing. So I'm not even sure in this room, although we may all think that we all have the same values, I'm not really sure if we all practice those same values the same way that yeah, we each. That's what I was going to say too. All right. So I think that's a that's a tough battle to fight per se. But I think that the value. I think it's more important to teach them that the values that they have, they should protect. They right. shouldn't change their values for someone else, for, for whatever reason, right, you know? Mm -hmm. That their values are their values, and they shouldn't even enforce those to other people, but they should make it clear that, hey, you know, this is, I don't eat meat, and this is what it is. I'm going back to the food thing here. <laughs> so a value is a shield. A value is a shield and not a sword. No, I think it's both. I think it's both. I think it's a sword and a shield because you're you're teaching when you when you tell someone. I mean, there's when someone asks you that, hey, why are you vegetarian, right? I mean, that's the sword, right? Because they're asking you. It's not a shield. You got to flip that to the sword, saying that, hey, this is why I'm doing it. Maybe you should try it, right? You know, the same thing of being vegan or whatever else that may be, right? Mm -hmm. So, and whether that's not or whether that's being Jane and not eating onion, potato, garlic during or fasting or doing any of those things, right? Right. Was that a right with a question or a right like, you're right? <laughs> you know, I like these, you know, I, I like just preparing the questions. It's a lot easier. I just have to, <laughs> I didn't have to do anything. I, I probably will do this more. <laughs> I mean, we're already half over. I think we'll skip. You guys are very talkative today, so we'll skip the next question. We'll go to number five. How do we teach children about our faults and not to emulate them? How do we teach children about our faults and not to emulate them? We do the general uh, journaling. Journaling. So, journaling. So uh, any lessons learned in your life in this stage of the life, uh, Pretty much we get bogged down into our routines. Uh, but we want to leave something for the kids. They may not re realize at this stage uh, what we are facing as an adult. Mm -hmm. um, but we do journaling in a way that has some sort of a, a SAR or lessons learned on that piece, summary of that can be talked about to kids. Uh, again, doesn't mean it's just the Jainism side, but it, mm -hmm. it could be in any field, whether your financials, your uh, decision making in your jobs or any kind of um, you know family relationship or any kind of things that you you learn something and everybody learns every day something so, so they're writing about you in their no, journal we, and we write saying, it we oh. write it we write it and oh family journal we write it as an adult oh okay <laughs> and, and we talk about that in a different 
lower level in a way that they could understand. I see. Not all the I alpha. <laughs> Not so all you the say, alpha. oh, I'm thinking about this and I'm writing down how to improve my life and what happened, what decision I took, and what it brought me here. Mm -hmm. Could that be different? Could that be thought about differently? Mm -hmm. Could we talk about to them, right? For instance, we don't borrow anything from anyone. Just a simple example. And the other day, the kids bring somebody's pencil or this and that, and then we actually talk about those things. And look, it's okay. Once in a while, you do some exchange it, but this is a bad habit to borrowing this, borrowing money, borrowing that, mm -hmm. those type of things. Um, but yeah, so that is one of the things that we do, and I think. They get it at some point. I don't think everything they what we talk about they understand. Right. But uh, we forget too, you know, because we take a decision while a lot of things are happening. Mm -hmm. So you have to sit down, look back, and see, okay, what did you do? How did you come out from here? Or how you uh, get into this situation? Mm -hmm. How can you avoid that? So that's one thing we do. I think uh, most of the times. You can see forgiveness in front of the kids. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That actually uh, makes them understand that okay, as adults we can also go wrong. Right. And it's absolutely fine to go wrong. But then uh, you have to really seek forgiveness and make sure that you do not repeat the mistakes again. So right. my uncle back in India always used to tell this: uh, "Galti karo, dubara karo." Uh, but so do the mistakes do new mistakes every time but don't do the same, same mistake. mistakes again and again so I think uh, if we try to uh, teach that to our kids then, then it becomes uh, easier for them also to understand that yes everybody does mistakes and you need not be harsh on too, too harsh on yourself but seek forgiveness and, and go on that yeah, I think I absolutely agree. I think kids look up to their parents, right? In, in the eyes of my daughter, I'm perfect. Like, mm -hmm. she wants to be like me, do everything that I'm doing. Whatever I'm doing, she thinks it's right. Mm -hmm. So I think you're absolutely right. I think you have to, to just communicate with them and say, hey, I made a mistake. This is the mistake I made. This is how I would do it differently. Uh, I think that, yeah, I think What's that's the latest just, mistake you made that you admitted to your kids? Ah. Uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's a good question. Uh, I don't know, but but it happens, right? I mean, sometimes I'll get mad at right. something that I shouldn't. You know, right. I think that's that's pretty much a common example. Uh -huh. And then, and I'll tell her, hey, look, I shouldn't have got mad. I should have handled it this way, because what I saw her doing was getting mad at my my yeah, son. Exactly. Right. The way I the way I'm getting mad. Right. Right. So so I because you know, they're looking up to you. They they want to just be like you. So that's I think yeah, just just being open with them and saying, hey, I made a mistake. Mm -hmm. how we're doing different ways. How do we teach our children that Jainism is something more than Patsala, something more than Sundays, and something to integrate into their entire life and thoughts? You know, uh, there's a big challenge um, in that, in, you know, in the trying to get to that objective because a lot of uh, our, um, it's very ritualistic mm -hmm. you know a lot of things that we do are ritualistic and these people or these kids I should say these kids grow up in a very uh, in a very diverse environment and you know they're taught to be logical about things and it's a constant struggle I, I have it with my son like I, he's like I don't understand why we do it this way and why we do it that way and so I think if we make it less ritualistic more in terms of uh, like their general education is more logic stress more on logic maybe they will have a better acceptance Mm -hmm. of, of the principles uh, rather than resist they will accept right. if they are ex if it is explained to them in a logical fashion sure. and there is logic a lot of it is logical we can <laughs> sure. do it in a logical way sure but I think we stress more on the ritualistic part than logic yeah. if they feel it's restriction means then 
they will not get that one. Right. Like Sai, my Jainism, when I try to explain my, my elder daughter, she now understands because she is 11 and she, she has attended Pachala for the last four years now, mm. so she can relate to a few things. So with, I explain them with the scientifically proven thing, like why we drink boiled water, right. why it's in Jainism, or why we should not eat food after. Because again, I am going back to the food. <laughs> <laughs> but we, are you hungry right now? <laughs> I'm just joking. You know? So after sunset, why should not? Means there are certain things that we follow. Or when you wake up, uh, she attended jab session for a few days, and then because of the timing, we were not able. But in that means when you wake up, say Navkar mantra for three times. So before going to bed, say Navkar mantra for three. Days. Why means we do that? Means yes, means if you follow that, means it's good. But otherwise, it means you, you means you are calm down before doing something. So something good. So when we try to explain them on that front, they get easily. They will be able to understand easily. Otherwise, means if they feel oh, it's a restriction today, we cannot do this one. Then they means and it's children's mind, right? When we say no to something, they want to do that first. Right. Right. So, I'm having to use reverse psychology a lot on my children now, where I tell them not to do the things I want them to do. So, and that sometimes it doesn't like work. Sometimes. <laughs> it's dangerous. It's very dangerous. dangerous. <laughs> because if it literally takes you, then. Yep. then <laughs> do you just do it to your children? or? <laughs> <laughs> and of course, uh, this dovetails into um, not having a set of rules imposed on you is question number one. How do we prove that? Jainism can add value to their lives. Whereas if I take on this set of rules, it's for my benefit. Yeah. See, at my home, uh, I'm Jain Gujarati and my wife is Maharashtrian. Mm -hmm. So we follow both of them. Right. Like Maharashtrian festival also, we tend to do this because they, we don't want to enforce on them, like on my kids, just follow Jainism. And we both <coughs> take just values, take the positives or values out of those. Let because we know from our grandparents what they used to do from our parents and then what we are doing and our next generation is going to do. Mm -hmm. And in fact, most of these questions are apl applicable to us also. Like what we are going to teach our children, but what we can teach ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> what challenges do we anticipate our children having and how can we plan for them? Who you mean? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would just We can make uh, our yeah, 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 yeah. Everybody's <laughs> trying to you know. If I recall correctly, we had decided that it was going to be up to each family. And we can try to think about those ahead of time. Still a challenge. Right. You know what was uh, what I learned that that uh, affected me is that just because a trap is easy to see doesn't mean it's easy to avoid. Like, mm -hmm. there are traps we can see in front of our lives that are very easy to see, but that are very hard to avoid, and we are sometimes going to fall into that. I think having a temple mm -hmm. may be a challenge. <laughs> I'm just saying in general, like the cost of running it and stuff like that. And okay. if, they, if they're really practical about being Jane and they're mindful of what's going on, they may not even need to go to a temple. Right. Maybe they go to the library and do the same thing that we're doing here. Mm -hmm. This might be hard to explain, but maybe dilution of culture. Um, each generation losing a little bit. Sure. Um, the previous generation held on to. And um, seeing that uh, for the kids and then their own kids. Right. And, um, deal, you know, first generation born here versus there. I mean, I think all that makes a difference. Um, Perhaps, you know, 50 years from now, we may all migrate to China. That might be the place to live. Right. You know, so I don't, those types of challenges, dilutional culture, things around us that might change, you know, outlook. How I mean, can we I plan think, for that? I see that challenging. Holding on to your core values, eating clean meat, you know. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> you know. Food is not going in there. <laughs> I just have to throw it in there. You. I, mean, I made it clear at the end of that thing, all right? It's recorded. You guys. Know. No, but I, I think what you're saying is right. But 
even from you say from generation to generation. I'm just yeah. saying like, I don't know. You what's your gap between you and your brother? Uh, six years. Okay, so I have a seven year gap, and there's a big difference. Yeah. Like, my dad tells me to do something, I don't question that. Right. right. I just go do it. Right. Right. And yeah. on the other side, it's like, well, you know, well, why and this and you know, like, who yeah. for it, right? So. That's true. And then. You know, I end up getting involved. I'm like, hey, dad said to go do it, go do it, right? And that's that, and move on, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so I think that there, there are a lot of things, not even generationally, just like that we're, we're either being more practical about or we're losing sight of mm -hmm. to, to move that forward. Yeah. So. What kind of Jane media is out there? Jane media? Yeah. Like YouTube? We're live. Yeah. Man, it's live. Oh, really? Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Are you on Facebook? No. Okay. I'm not on Facebook. Well, you should get on Facebook. I'll have my wife check for me. <laughs> She's on Facebook. <laughs> She's the kind of the... She tells me the Facebook news that's going on with my own friends. <laughs> so if you miss any of the programs, you can go to that Facebook page and you can see all the videos, like all the program videos from last week. And that's great. Like that. So I guess that's media. Certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what about these, uh, the adults watching lectures from afar? Right, that's another example. Right. Um, Where can so I get those? That's a YouTube. good question. Oh, YouTube. Yeah. Most of them. Yeah. yeah. Okay. What we play here. Yeah. It's all on YouTube. And <clears throat> also, there are specific channels in India, like Paras and uh, mm -hmm. so many uh, channels which only uh, cast Jain of Sadhus, uh, Pravachans, and all that. Mm -hmm. Did you get here? here? These courses. Uh, Weekend. Okay, yeah. about Jainism? We have somebody who's uh, you know, discussing uh, stuff. It can be not the whole day, but uh, right. thirty minutes live. Like okay. They have a. They have actually. They have a. Jaina has their own slot. They have a Mangalam part. Yeah. In which it's one? Called Mangalam TV on TV. Asia. TV Asia. Oh. I don't know if it's thirty minutes or hour, but it's a slot um, that I think is on Sunday mornings. Mm. Okay. Cool. So uh, it sounds to me like there's a lot of media out there that our children can access because one of the things, as you guys know, is that media is very powerful in our children's lives and we want to surround them with quality media. Um, and so uh, there may be some resources out there that maybe, or maybe that's a project for dad's class is we can combine all of these things into one place and just have a list of mm -hmm. places people can go to learn more about Jainism. I think for us, <coughs> the biggest interaction is coming here, seeing all the people. We make it a point as much as we can to attend all the events, especially the festivals. I mean, granted, kids are not going to sit through the discourses or any of the lectures, but at least if the events have any sort of, like, you know, uh, plays or something mimicking Jain, Jainism, we get a question or two for the amount of time that they are engaged. But for us, that's still with mm -hmm. And things, simple things like you know, Raksha Portalis, right? Mm -hmm. Constant reminder mm -hmm. uh, keeps Excellent. it together for them to, yeah, say something different. You know. Yeah, my kids actually just looked at it and were like, "Why don't I have it? Where did mine go?" That's right. That's right. Yeah. So as you guys know, uh, in America there is a an experience, a Christian experiment experience where. You can grow up listening to Christian radio and music, watching Christian TV, going to see Christian movies. I mean, we don't kind of have that here, but is there an experience like that in India? Not in that no? Movie. Well, uh, for Srimad Rachandra, there was a movie or a couple of hundred besides the, the play again. Mm -hmm. uh, so right. they have had that portion a little bit. I have attempted it, it was nice. Mm -hmm. uh, but strictly Jainism, I, or based on the word Mahir, I haven't seen or heard anything. Mm -hmm. Actually, they, they have a very good kids part, too. I think they do a very good job on their, their mm -hmm. kids. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Okay. So they have their own magazine. Uh, I get it from India. It comes every month. You know, it has, it's just like maybe, I don't know, 10, 12 pages. <clears throat> one story, one, you know, what, uh, you know, what, what would, uh, how's it, what would you do type of, mm -hmm. and then they have a world, uh, like a crossword puzzle, or find find these words, and I mean, it's a, 
Right. It's like a highlights magazine. Type right. Thing. Right, so as you know, this question dovetails in with the friends with similar values questions. The, these are powerful influences in our children's lives. Number one, their parents. Number two, their friends. Maybe number three is the media that they experience while they're growing up, because they experience a lot of it. Um, do we want to teach our children to be proud to be Jane? proud to be who you are or you're proud to wear a JSA shirt or carry that book bag or what have you, right? You know? So I think that comes from their inner self. If they feel that they're part of that, then they're proud. Mm -hmm. Now I've seen the high schoolers, they want to stand out. They want to see themselves something different from others. Mm -hmm. This comes into play. Oh yeah, I'm different from others. Uh, really? I, I, I don't know. I thought it was the opposite. I thought kids just want to be normal. They do want school. to be normal to the like, school. They, like everybody else. Right. But something specially called out for a special uh, purpose, they do want to be different. So for instance, if I have a big phone numbers for my whole family and I say, okay, I just want the sequence yeah. numbers, right? Five, six, seven, eight, whatever. No, no, I want something different for my, you know. <laughs> something special, something different. And... Uh, they do see that when, when, when we are in school, when she is in the school, I'm talking about my older one, mm -hmm. she does definitely see that. She has been here more than my other ones, so she can relate a lot of things uh, in a positive way. Um, and it is just a different. It's a, it's a different, this is where you are, and this is why we are so special. We are something different. So that difference, it does, she does carry it a little differently, and she's pretty proud for what she is and what she is doing. So. Um, it does tie up. So she came up with, or I think maybe in another group, we came up with something, you know, it's, it's really hard for us to define, okay, show me the karma theory. How, how do you prove that theory? And, right. And just like what we say, what the Kantwa, or the one that you take it for as is, certain right. things you have to take it as is. But the closest thing I could relate with that piece was, you know, the brightest thing what you see in the world is the sun. And as the cloud comes over, it, it shines away a little bit right so think about your soul is your brightest emitting star or whatever it is and as you make karmas is your blanket comes over uh, and then those lights going away and uh, the thickness of the blanket defines your type of the karma and those type of discussion when we do now the little ones catching up on those type of things no no that's the thick thick blanket <laughs> she will tell me those things so yeah so it's something like that but I think it goes in a way that if you are a little different, nothing wrong with it. Um, so don't take it in a negative way. In fact, take it in a, something differently. So, But is it right to be proud to be Jane? Um, no, the core Jainism value would probably tell you probably no. Right. Uh, so not proud, but nothing wrong being different. Maybe we can change that to uh, a feeling of extraordinary... Luckiness. Uh, something like being Jane. Right. Something like that. Maybe we can kind of transform, transform that into, yeah. into a kind of appreciation and a gratitude for that. To being in this, yes, correct. In what scenarios can we lead our children by example? Not to do that. Not, <laughs> what I Not do follow me. Not do that. <laughs> yeah, but some of that stuff they got to learn on their own, right? Yeah, I can tell you, don't do this, don't yeah. don't speed, and yeah. you start speeding, and you get a ticket, you go back to driving, you know, the speed limit for the next, what, yeah. two days or three days a week, <laughs> month, whatever, 90 days for the probation, probation period, and right. then you're back to, I mean, so you, you, you have to live some of that, mm -hmm. I think. Mean, you can't them? teach them everything like that. You can tell them that, hey, this is what happens, this is the consequences, this is the ramifications of that, but it's very hard for, for you to tell them that, hey, don't. Don't do this, you know. In fact, they tell us what's right and wrong, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you taught them right, they will. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Any scenarios uh, where someone has successfully led their children by example with regards to Jainism? <clears throat> it happened this morning for me. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> 
No, I just, I, I'm sure a lot of you guys have road rage, you know, so um, often I find myself getting upset at mm-hmm. people around me, and so, or, I mean, not family, but, like, right. outside of the car. Yeah. Um, but my little one, the one that came here, she's like, why are you screaming? What are you mad about? <laughs> you know, and so um, I think just, because during the day we always talk about not getting upset, you know, um, try to diffuse anger and um, I think she's picking up on those traits. Nonviolence, no anger, you know, those types of things. Sorry for cutting you off. (laughs) 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 Actually, that's another one. My older one, um, when he, he doesn't like being interrupted because we keep saying, like, don't interrupt (laughs) us. No, he's saying the same thing. Anyways, that's different. But yeah, I, I, I think it happens on a daily basis for us. Right. Something. How can the Derasur add value to the lives of college students and young professionals who are entirely absent? I mean, if you look around, they're not here. But they're in Houston. There's a lot of them. That grew up here. So what are we not providing them that they need? Sorry, which age group? Are you? The college? college students and young professionals. Okay. So between, you know, 20 and 30, nobody here. Yeah. And that's a fault of ours. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's, and that's a fault of the Derasur. That's our fault that we need to remedy. Yeah, I think so what do they want that they are not getting here? I think they need that kind of attraction or a pull rather than a push to come to the Russell. So what's in there for me, right? That, right. that question and uh, when I compare with things uh, what we have, at least for the younger group, I think uh, small little things of getting that recognition or uh, I would not say bribes exactly but some reward mm-hmm. of attending uh, what motivates you to actually get up on Sunday morning and, and be in the Rasa, right? Especially for that 20 to 30 age group uh, because they are they live that high life and they want to be in that fast-paced world and this is like going in a bullet cart, right? Where you have to slow down and so I think that is where uh, that is the gap, I would say. How to make it attractive, I, I don't have a clear answer but maybe if if we can understand what excites them and try to bring in those things so I would say more practical and uh, nothing to do with studies and it should be a fun thing for them then probably they might turn up more in numbers rather than having no them. No I was gonna say I've been coming here since the 80s the Jane Temple and I fall into this group <laughs> because after graduating, I, I mean, I didn't come to Bachel anyway, I went to Jim Mission, but from 20 to 30s, um, I didn't come here. And partly because my view, and I'll be honest, I felt the temple activities were disorganized, there's no discipline, and I was comparing this to my experience at Jim Mission. Right, you know? and we're in a real and, competition with other groups and, and organizations. Right, so exactly, and so well, I would lean things. towards going back there because everything there was strict, disciplined, and I felt like I learned stuff from there. Whereas when I came here, it was like mass chaos, people talking over each other, and so I think that was one of the problems. I think the reason that I started coming back on a more regular basis is I had kids. And the kids pulled me back to coming back here. And I think having a culture and friends of contemporary ages and, um, you know, I think that makes it more attractive. So if there's a way for um, for them to have kids earlier, <laughs> wow. that would be one of the <laughs> way of bringing them back. It's a concrete example. Oh, man. So I, I, I think fertility is the answer. 
answer. <laughs> <laughs> I do think that um, if they, if other, if other people their age come, they come. But we got to get over that bootstrapping problem first of how to reach that critical mass of people where they're like, oh yeah, you know, just coming is part of it because I get to see these friends once a week or whatever. But uh, we got to get there. We got to answer the first question before we get to that critical mass. Well, one of the things I think, uh, as a community. I find we don't stress enough is the networking within the community itself. I mean, you know, we all are reasonably successful people, and uh, for young folks, uh, actually, we can offer a lot of guidance, a lot of uh, career advice. But they would need they would need that or want that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but if it's done in a structured format, you know, I think there is value to that. Uh, a lot of communities are, out, you know, other communities are here, my friends, they help their own community members a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, whether That's it true. is, you know, whether it is business, whether it is, uh, you know, professional. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, I had a yeah. similar thought along the same lines is maybe on a monthly basis or start on a quarterly basis, like, you know, we have varied uh, diversity in terms of professions between businesses, doctors, engineers. Somebody eats uh, one hour and not in data sir, perhaps outside yeah. over lunch or whatever. And then like you know, structure that in a way that you're talking about the profession, talking about like you know uh, I would stay away, this is just personally me, because when you say you're giving guidance, the first thing they're like, Oh I don't need guidance. I'm old enough, I know what needs to be done. But it's like, hey, no guidance, nothing, it's free, there's lunch, you come talk, have any questions, but today's topic is how to do your own taxes. How to, like, depends on which, like, you know, month you are in the year, if it's tax time, if it is signing up for healthcare, if it is, like, going to college or applying for college, <coughs> those kind of things, and, and setting that up. And my second point to that, sorry, I didn't mean to interject, but probably I would take this question, we have the Jain youth group as well that we heard last week, and ask them to ask questions, hey, what, how can we help, or what can we do, whether at Terasa or outside of Terasa setting, right. to, to bring the group together. So YJP does their own thing, they have dinners in town, I get these emails all the time that say hey, we're doing it in Dallas, we're doing it in New York, we're doing it in Houston, wherever. So they, I mean, they do things, but I think that there's a lot of things that we as a community haven't learned really to do properly. One is to give, I would say, support services. Okay? And when I mean support services, I mean, you know, whether that's a lot of the other places give medical support services, family counseling, peer to peer review, like, there's a lot of other things. I mean, I think one of the best ones is the marriage one, like, before they get married, they have to go to their temple, they have to go to their priest, you know, and they have to spend time with them to make sure they're on the same page, they understand the values, they understand who's doing what, I mean, all the simple things that sound simple, but no one knows until you get into it, you know, and we don't do a good job in doing that. So because we don't offer these other support services, I think that's a hard sell to go say, hey, come to the temple. The second thing is, I don't even think you need to come to the temple. You can probably do it outside. I think their mindset is, hey, let's go do this here, right? If we, instead of said, instead of us saying, why don't you come to the temple on a Sunday? If we said, hey, we're gonna meet everyone in Memorial Hermann Park or whatever, you know, I guarantee you, you'll have more show than you do at the temple because people are like, oh, well, it's out of the way. Convenience, convenience is a big thing, right? Like. A lot of them don't want to leave the city or, you know, Montrose or wherever they live, right? You know, they're like, hey, I'm, I'm centric to here. Right. You know? So I think that there's a lot of those challenges that the only way we can really overcome that and get buy-in is to really give them support services and other tools, you know, for them to succeed in. Then only they'll realize that. Or we have to make them a part of that, right? So we have to ask them their opinion, too which we don't. We're like, hey, we're gonna guide you. Yeah. Well, I don't need your guidance. You, know, you probably need my guidance. I mean, like, that's the conversation. <laughs> like, it's totally it's different, true. right? It's you know? true. So, I mean, you know, we think we can give guidance, but they would need the guidance, so they would have to listen. So a discussion is probably better than having a guidance session, you know? Mm -hmm. Because they may, even, they may even bring more value than we do, you know, in certain cases, you know? Right. 
So the things that age group want are jump-starting their career and networking, um, kind of how to be an adult stuff like taxes and how to do certain, certain things, how to buy a house or whatever, and social services, how to do what you need to think about before marriage, what you need to think about, where the Deras here is here to support you when your folks die, you can do these things, here are places you can reach out to. Though, and we have to meet them where they are, which is not the Deras. I also we have to meet them at U of H. We yeah. have to meet yeah. them at, you know, where young people hang out. And okay. we need to listen to them and allow them a stake in the Deraser. Uh, give them power over the shape of the Deraser. I think they want an experience. That's what they want. They want an experience. Everything they do is about experience. They go to a new restaurant to have an experience. I don't know really what that really means, but that's what it is. <laughs> so we have, if you're gonna cater to that, you gotta build your own experience that, hey, you're gonna come here and you're gonna spend 40 minutes with us, but in that 40 minutes, we're gonna do 10 minutes of mindfulness. Like, what's that? That's an experience. Well, I mean, okay, like, you know, I'm just being, I sent you guys that book the other day, yeah. you know, in the bookstore, in the it's baby not, section, it's uh, like mindfulness. I'm like, hey, you gotta take this <laughs> So those are the kind of things, you know, because that's the only way that you'll get buying. And this is a question that everybody wants to know. I mean, companies spend a lot of money trying to figure out what people between 20 and 30 want. And it's not as easy as asking them. If it were that easy, they would know, right? But what do they want and what do they need? I mean, that's something that um, we don't know right now. Um, and it's not as easy as thinking back to when we were that age because... Nothing is that easy. <laughs> yeah, but when, you know, I, I mean, I'm in the same boat as Neil is, but, you know, I didn't probably come to the answer for that period of time. Because, Why not? Why not? Because I was, bu I, I was busy in my own life, doing my own things, my career, I was traveling a lot, and slept, sleeping meant something to me, you know? So, okay, fine, I didn't go to Temple on Sunday, right? You know? But did I really have to? What was the you know, cost benefit? Yeah, right, you know? But if I was somewhere, like for Pradesh or something like that, I would go. If I was, if I was in a different city, I would go to that temple. So be it. It wasn't about friends. It wasn't. It was me wanting to go, right? Which is totally different than what we're talking about. Right? Yeah, right? Same so, way. Yeah. so I mean, we. I think the values. Go back to your values thing. You know, the values that were instilled in us. We're not letting go of those values, but I think that there's a phase of our life that we're trying to focus on something different and not on that. I think we have to celebrate being a gem, not, not be, like we're born into it. What if we were born into Christian? It's just we are committing back to the religion in that way. And to next point, it's, it's the experiencing and celebrating that fact rather than <clears throat> being proud or trying to say, oh, Jainism is doing all this and this is great and Christianism or Muslim, that's, that's not right. Mm -hmm. I think anything we engage, right? So uh, after high school, whatever happens in college, I don't know, they may have be part of J YJ college group or YJP is definitely after mm -hmm. college. But when something in college, they go UT, some A&M, and they just lose all those. Whatever they learn here, unless they have engagement, a networking thing that had Siddharth, which I was trying to join right now, from high school to college, it doesn't happen after we're from the professional to the college. They lose it. And then as either they get busy or something, Unless you keep them engaged. So even before they used to have Hana here, if you invite people to come to Hana, they don't find Hana interesting, so they wouldn't come even for that when adults would come, right? So whatever it is, there's some activity of engagement. Mm -hmm. What's cool is that if you go to Facebook, it actually shows how many people viewed it. And you'll see certain videos that have like 200 plus views. So there are people viewing, right? They may be traveling, they may be watching it, so we don't know what age group is really watching it. Is it just us watching it, or is it really maybe my kids' grandparents or my parents watching it, or is it that generation that's like, I couldn't go, but let me let me see what's going on. And it's very quick for them to do, right? It's very interactive for them. It's, they get it right there and then, it's on demand, you know? So I think that, you know, this online media stuff will work, you know, at some point in time. But one of the other challenges we have here specifically is we don't have a priest or a person that makes that bond, mm -hmm. you know, that says that, hey, you know, I'm in trouble, I need help, I need guidance, let me pick up that phone and call someone, right? We right. Don't, we don't it's have really that. nice to have a guy, because then you can ask your guy. 
or lady. <laughs> when you or, have or, a problem. Or, or lady, yeah, yeah. whatever yeah. that may be, right? You know, so I think that that, that connection, right, that you have, that's a very, very strong bond that's created with the, with the kids yeah. at a certain age, and they carry that bond. Right? I agree it's that relationship, which is huge. In fact, that's what I was going to add, is that Chinma Mission, we had one or two spiritual leaders that we all kind of turned to for questions, advice, and guidance. And I think that age group between 20 and 30 is looking for somebody like that, aside from your family, obviously. but. Um, Goran Lokal and Darshanti, if you guys know, they're kind of, they're kind of like the main spiritual leaders for that community, mm -hmm. and so I think, and then social networking. I think, um, you know, for building an experience, that age group is looking for a mate, and so having a pool of people that right. they can actually like check out, you know, right. and I think that actually would make a difference. Sure. Honestly, it would. yeah, a dating service, a yeah. dating service would be better. That's than right. Whole That's right. See, I'm, I'm pushing that direction. All but. part of the plan. <laughs> I'm trying to send out my kids. So that I can all get so is that why you're coming back to life? Yeah. <laughs> That's my ultimate goal is to get them married. I think in reverse, so you can also learn from them what they are looking for. And then, like, you know, as, as parent of a young kid who's going to be that 15 year old, 20 year old, what are the things I should look out for? As they're growing up, what sort of experience should I give them? That's something I would want to learn from them. They are, they are experienced to. 15 to 20, 25 years. Right. Uh, I think we're out of time. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. We don't have time for questions or comments. We can take those um, after after class, but I think we have another class coming in. <coughs> People got to get their kids. Thank you, everybody, for coming today. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, questions. Oh, yeah.